All right, what's up, guys? Uh, it's a nice day in New York. Just finished up my morning calls, so figured I'd get on here and just record something real quick. So, how do you make $10,000 per month? This is the question I probably get asked the most from people on the internet, but also just friends and family. There's this, there's this weird obsession with this number. I'm not sure why. I think it's because it's, it's probably somewhat attainable. It feels realistic, but it's also enough to where people feel like they could, they could live off of it pretty comfortably. So uh, in this video, I'm basically just gonna break down exactly how to do this. If you take the things I'm about to talk about, which I kind of have to figure out what I'm actually gonna talk about, but if you take these concepts and apply it, I am confident you will make more money than you are right now. Um, and these concepts apply to any business you're looking to start. Um, whatever you're gonna do, you're gonna need to know these concepts. And by the way, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna sell you some course at the end of this. Uh, this is just, I don't want to have to constantly tell everyone how to make it. I'm just going to send them this video now. So that's the function of this video. Um, all right. We'll start off with expectations. And I just want to be clear. Again, I'm not selling anything. So I have no incentive to try and exaggerate this or make it seem easier than it actually is. It's probably going to take time. And it's going to be hard. It's going to suck at first. It's going to suck for most of it, probably. Um, so I want, to be, I want to be clear that, I mean, this took me probably like five years to actually hit this number. Uh, but once it clicks, it clicks. And hopefully this can kind of fast track the whole process. Um, so that's, that's the first thing. I just want to make sure the expectations are clear. Um, but anyways, first step to making $10,000 per month is to do shit. And don't click off. I know this is, it sounds silly. You're wondering, okay, how is this, how is this going to make me $10,000 per month? But this is important. And you actually can't make $10,000 per month unless you do shit. And what I mean by do shit is not necessarily some business that's going to make you the money, but just learning skills. It doesn't matter what skill, it can be anything. It can be a money-making skill, so it can be sneaker reselling, it can be Amazon, and no, I'm actually not going to be talking about that stuff in this video, um, but it can be drop shipping, e-commerce, affiliate marketing, stuff like that, but can also just be becoming really good at like learning how to study or mastering like lawn mowing. It can be anything, um, but it's important that you actually do shit. And the second thing, after you do shit, is you actually have to get results, results doing shit. And so if you're doing something and your 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 form of doing shit is running a business or, or making money, then maybe getting results means making five thousand dollars per month, ten thousand dollars per month, twenty, whatever. If it's something like studying or if it's something like mowing lawns, maybe you feel like you've just completely mastered the art of studying, the art of reducing procrastination. You know every obstacle someone faces when they're trying to study and, and not doing it well, and you know how to solve it. You know the strategies they need for it. Um, again, this is super important. You cannot move on from here if you, if you aren't here and you don't have some skill already. What I recommend is first making sure you don't already have something because you probably already do. I just ask your friends and family, people who actually know you well, ask them what they think your strengths are or your, your best skills are. Chances are you have something that you're, you're pretty good at if you haven't just been sitting at home playing video games all day. Um, but if you really don't have anything and you have like no skills, you've got no results, you're not good at anything, click off this video and go do shit and figure out what you actually like. It's gonna be easier if you actually enjoy what you're doing because it's gonna be tough, like I said earlier. And so if you actually enjoy it, it's gonna allow you to, to push through those moments. For me, my doing shit was sneaker reselling. Um, and it worked for me because I, I like shoes, I'm a sneakerhead, and so I was able to, to keep doing it. Um, and my phase of doing shit and getting results was like a five, six year period um, before I got into these next steps. So that's the introduction part. Um, now let's get into the actual the actual thing. So I'm going to split it into three sections. It's going to be first, and I'll just keep these up here. First, you got to get eyeballs. Let's see if this looks. And you got to deliver, or sorry, convert eyeballs. I got to practice these eyeballs. And then you got to deliver eyeballs. Get some 
some magnets on here. It doesn't matter what business you're gonna do, you're gonna need these three things. Um, and I'm gonna break down all of them in a little bit more detail. Maybe that took a little bit too much space. Um, all right, let's start out with getting eyeballs. We'll switch to red here. Um, getting eyeballs. This is basically just getting attention on your product, on your service. Um, and I wanna be clear, there's two ways you can kind of build this product or service. It can either be, like you can either just keep doing what you're already doing. So let's say you're, uh, like you chose to do sneaker reselling, you chose to do some like money making method and you got results. Maybe you just keep doing that and just doing more of it and you can add these steps in. Um, but what I'm gonna be focusing on in this video is how to build a business around the skill you just learned. And so this can work for money making method, but can also work for just the skills you've learned, like the student, the lawn loan, et cetera. Um, all right, getting eyeballs. This is split up into two things. I'm actually not gonna use red. Split up into two things. You got organic. Also, I apologize for the handwriting. And you got uh, paid ads. You can do either or. It's gonna be best when you combine them and you do both of them, and I'll explain that in a sec. Um, and I also wanna, after this, I wanna, I wanna give you a way where you can just do paid only, because I know a lot of you guys probably don't wanna sit there and make content make TikToks all day. Um, so I'll show you how you can do it with just paid ads and how that can look like. Um, but starting out with organic, in my opinion, organic is, is key. This is the best way to build an audience, best way to scale up a business quick and hit that 10K per month or, or way past that. Um, biggest thing with this is you wanna figure out where your customers are. And I know this is pretty, uh, pretty intuitive. I don't think you need to be told that, um, but you'd be surprised at how many people don't actually make content for their desired, their desired customer, their, their uh, desired customer avatar. Um, I mean, I know people who have like millions of followers, like no joke, like millions of followers across platforms and they can't make more than like $5,000 a month from their following. And for context, we did, and I don't say this to flex, we did uh, like 30K per month when we had like four or 5,000 followers on our Instagram alone, just Instagram. Um, and that was because our, our following was so hyper-focused on what we were selling that it was like every one of our followers were people who could buy from us. Um, and by the way, I actually had pushed off this video, making this video for a while, because I didn't feel qualified to talk about it. In my mind, it's like, if you want to show someone how to make $1,000 a month, you got to be making 10K per month. If you want to show how to make 10K, you got to be doing 100, 100 mil, whatever. Um, that's why this video is not how to make 100K, because I'm not making a million a month. Um, but we hit our first 100K month in September, um, so I feel qualified to talk about this stuff. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that if you actually apply these tips, you will make more money right after watching this video. Um, again, organic, most important, figure out who you serve. And so this can be age ranges, it can be interests, it could be income levels, just splitting up and kind of narrowing down on your, your customer their demographic. Um, for us, actually, chances are, if you're watching this, you are above the age of 18 and you are a guy. Do we have like 4% or 2% women um, and like 11% under 18? Most of, most of you guys are, are over 24, um, which is good for us, right? Usually you're over 24, you got money, you're probably a little bit, a little bit smarter, you got a little bit more experience. Um, those are the types of people we make content for, those are the people we want to serve. Um, if you want to just get a bunch of 13 year old kids, by all means, go for it. But I mean, unless you're selling like candy, you're like Mr. Beast, you're probably not going to, uh, you're probably not going to make money. So figure out who you serve and figure out where they hang out and what they're interested in. Um, and so if you are serving like grandparents, maybe you're on Facebook, maybe you're doing email, maybe you're doing some traditional forms of marketing. But if you're serving a younger, a younger audience, maybe you're on TikTok, maybe you're on um, Instagram places where they hang out. As far as the content itself, the two things you gotta keep in mind are, you gotta give value. Everything you make has gotta be value driven. And there's two components to this, or two ways you can provide value, and that's gonna be information, da -da -da -da, or it can be entertainment. For us, if you're looking for an example, entertainment, our cash out videos, 
where we're like going to these events and just buying stuff, those are purely entertainment. Um, it still hits our our desired audience, but it's, it's there's no value being provided information-wise. We're not teaching anything. Then we've got the stuff where we're actually breaking actual concepts down. We're providing value in the form of information. Um, you got to do one or the other. You're going to get a higher quality of audience if you're providing info, people who actually care about what you have to say. Um, but I think a, a, a balance is good. Entertainment usually is what actually goes viral. So you want a healthy balance. Um, cool. Big thing also here is you want to make content that is so hyper focused on hitting your target audience that a lot of times someone who doesn't isn't in that space maybe isn't going to like it or isn't going to understand it. So having stuff like inside jokes, like for trying to give an example, like maybe if you're a, a sneakerhead, like creasing your shoes is something very specific to sneakerheads, and maybe the average person doesn't care about it. If you include things like that, that people only in your audience are going to understand. Facebook is very good if you're posting on Instagram or Facebook. It's very good at finding and learning who your target audience is, who actually enjoys your content. They'll do the work for you. You just got to make the stuff. Um, so if you continuously make it, Facebook, every time you post, their goal is to keep people on their platform. And so obviously they want to push your content out to people who are actually going to stay, consume your content and stay on their platform. So your interests are aligned. Um, so just make stuff that like serves your audience and over time, as long as it's quality and it's like good information or good entertainment, Facebook will find your audience for you and eventually start to push your stuff out. Um, so yeah, that's in short organic. Uh, the pieces that you need, I mean, you're gonna have to be doing like scripting, so figuring out what you're actually gonna be talking about and then filming and then editing and then posting. Um, so it does take some time, but uh, in my mind, there's no better return on investment, time or money. Um, all right, so. That is organic. This is paid, so paid media. And this is probably, again, most of you guys, if you're watching this, you're older than 24, you're probably working a normal job, so maybe you don't have time to be filming, constantly filming TikToks and Renegade and whatever. Um, so you're probably more interested in paid ads. So I'm gonna be talking about one funnel that works strictly with paid. You don't need any organic at all. You don't need to make any videos. Um, but then after, I'm gonna also explain why Organic plus paid is so powerful that I think you should make some TikToks and do some, do some renegades. Um, I think you'll see why once I break that down. Anyways, paid. How you can do this with only paid, no organic. It's going to be called a self-liquidating funnel. Self-liquidating. We'll just call it like that. Um, basically, what you're doing here is your first offer is gonna pay for the cost of the ad spend, which is your cost to acquire a customer, your, your, your CAC. Um, and the big thing here that I think people mess up with ads if they're trying to do this, because major corporations, right, you think about their strategy. Let's say their, their LTV of a customer lifetime value is, we'll call it uh, $1,000, just for the sake of the example. So every customer who buys from them is worth or will spend with them a thousand dollars. This doesn't specify how quick this could be over a year, it could be over two years, it could be over three years. But every person who buys from them on average will spend a thousand dollars with them. That's how much it's worth to the company. What these major corporations will do is they'll spend cost to acquire cost, they'll spend up to call it like nine hundred dollars to acquire this customer and then pocket the hundred dollars, assuming they can operate at scale and then just do this over and over and over again. The problem that small businesses and guys like us, we can't compete with this because we don't, don't necessarily have the funding to spend and spend and spend. And so what happens with the big companies, what they can do is let's say it takes 10 months for this $1,000, it's like $100 a month subscription, and they usually churn after the, the 10th month. It takes them 10 months to make money. And so if you think about all the ad spend that has to go into it to acquire the customer, this is upfront. They're spending the $900 right away the customer, to acquire the customer. The customer signs up for their subscription. They pay $100. The first month, they're down $800 for every customer. But they can afford to because they have the bankroll to pay for the ads and then wait the 10 months or however long it takes and make that $100 profit, the difference between these two. We can't afford to do that, right? And so that's the function of the self-liquidating offer, the self-liquidating funnel. 
um, which I'll break down. Basically, what you want to do is you want to have a small, a small offer, something cheap. Uh, ideally, you want under ten dollars. Reason, like reason being is is usually under ten dollars, you get impulse buys. Um, people don't, you don't have like to have like a fancy funnel or a sales call or anything like that. So under ten dollars, so let's call it like, I don't know, eight bucks. And you want this eight dollars to cover the cost of your ad spend, the cost to acquire a customer. Um, so you want to break even on this. This is the goal. And this eight dollars, that's the offer. Ideally, you have like an order bump. So call it like. You have like a $49 a month, $49 per month back end or upsell, upsell slash order bump. So basically what this means is, okay, they see the ad, they get sent to the, the, the page where it's the $8 offer and they buy it. And then right after they buy it or right before they buy it, they get hit with a pop-up that says, hey, do you want this additional ad in whatever? And it, essentially the function of that is just to increase the average order value. Um, so this $8, your, your cost of acquired customer doesn't have to be the cost of the offer. It just has to be the uh, AOV. So it's just gotta be this cost of the offer plus the average. Um, so let's say one out of every seven customers actually buys this, this um, order bump, you get an extra $7. So you're getting $15 uh, per customer. So you can spend $15 per customer and you're, you're fine. And the function or the idea is that you're breaking even. So you're probably sitting here wondering like, <laughs> if I'm breaking even, how am I gonna make 10K per month? The idea is you have a back end offer, you have an upsell, some type of ascension or another product you're selling, and you can collect their emails on the first order and have a natural progression. So let's say the, the, the initial, the self liquidating offer is like, for like, let's say for reselling, it's like a list of 50 consignment stores, right? And it's just the list, nothing else. We can sell that eight bucks, run paid ads to that. Let's say we have a, a small upsell to like a cook group, $40 a month, whatever. And again, I'm not, I'm not here to sell you anything. We actually don't have a paid cook group. Maybe we should, um, but uh, you have that. Let's say your average order value is like 15 bucks. You're spending 15 bucks to acquire that. Um, and then you have a natural progression where, like we used to have a, a consignment offer where we charge a few thousand dollars for access to like direct relations, direct line of communication with the stores. We would vet the stores. We would provide places to buy. We would provide uh, like what shoes are selling best at each store and, and kind of open that, that communication uh, with the actual store owners themselves. And so that's a couple thousand dollars, right? So we're getting free leads basically to our high ticket offer. And then the whole high ticket offer is cake. It's just pure profit all of that thousand dollars. Obviously you gotta pay for the, the team if you wanna build that out. But if you're just doing it yourself, it's just pure profit. It just goes straight to your bottom line. Um, so that solves the eyeball problem for you or getting eyeballs, which is um, honestly probably the hardest piece of this, this whole thing. Um, anyways, why do you need organic plus paid? We'll switch to blue. Let me write this down, organic. plus paid equals money. Basically how, let me just have some coffee, how uh, Facebook ads work, right? And this is probably where you're gonna be posting ads. You can run like YouTube, Google, whatever, um, but I'm most familiar with Facebook, so that's what I'll be talking about. How it works is that again, like I said with the organic piece, Facebook will eventually learn who likes to consume your content and they'll push that content towards them. Because again, their goal is to keep people on the platform. Your incentives are aligned. With paid ads, you can just set like an advantage plus audience, which basically means Facebook can just do anything they want. It's just, they'll learn it the same way they do with organic. But what's better is if you can give them audiences. Uh, and so for example, like for us, things that we'll mess around with is we can push paid ads to our followers. So let's say we have, I don't know what we have, like 60K followers now we can push ads, paid ads, straight to our followers. And so let's say our, our plan is to just make entertainment content or make information content, just provide value, no sales, no ask in the content, so it can go viral and it can do well. And then all of our asks are just pushed out through paid ads. Um, other things you can do is you can create lookalike audiences based on who has interacted with your stuff or who has followed you. So let's say you're, you've done a very good job of building your own following base, right? You're, you have the 60,000 followers, all of them are very much the people you want to serve, the people you want to sell to. 
you can create a lookalike audience based on your followers and Facebook will be like, okay, what are the characteristics of this person's following? Who else matches that bucket? And then you can push ads straight to them. Other things you can mess around with, uh, we do like IG engagers, Instagram engagers, so people who have like liked, commented, shared, saved any of our posts. So these could be non-followers, these could be followers, people who are, they've, they've consumed and engaged with our, with our content. Also, we can do 75% uh, view, view duration. So they've consumed, like let's say we posted an Instagram reel, they've watched 75% of it all the way through. Usually a little bit more nurtured, a little bit, uh, a little bit of a warmer lead versus someone who's just never heard of you before. Um, yada, yada, yada. And as you, as you build out your product, and this will be kind of more down towards the, the converting and the delivery, um, you'll also get a, a better idea of who your people who are actually buying your stuff are, right? And so if you're able to create a list, maybe you've sold a thousand, uh, a thousand lawn mowing services, right? And you've collected a thousand contacts for that. You can input their email, their name, their contact information, et cetera, and create a, a lookalike audience for that. Facebook will know, okay, these are the customers that have actually purchased. Let's push this out towards more people who will purchase. Um, and you can set your, your optimizations for your campaigns towards different things. You can set it towards more followers, you can set it towards more like landing page clicks, or you can set it towards more purchases, um, excuse me, which uh, Facebook will optimize for more sales for you. Um, so yeah, that's best. If you can do this, do this. I promise you, I don't care what anyone tells you, just organic is okay, probably better than just paid. Um, and just paid is okay, not great. But if you do these both, that's the sauce. Um, okay, so you've gotten eyeballs, you've gotten attention. I need some more coffee. Uh, how do you actually convert them? This is gonna be all sales and marketing. Um, so we can start with the marketing. Marketing actually goes into your, let me grab this marker. Marketing goes into your deliverable and your getting of the eyeballs. Like I mentioned earlier, you don't want to be making content just for a bunch of 13 year old kids on the internet, right? I mean, maybe, maybe you do, by all means, go for it, but uh, that's, not, that's not our goal and I guess it's just not your goal either. Um, if you do a good job with your organic and getting the eyeballs and getting the right eyeballs and you have a good product and you can show that, sales and marketing is pretty much taken care of and that's the best way to run this. You don't want to be like, there's this, there's this, Stigma around specifically if you're in like the info product space, right? Selling a course, selling a, a program, community, whatever. There's this stigma that everyone is a scammer for good reason because a lot of people don't deliver on their, their product. They don't actually deliver on their, their promises. Um, and so it, it becomes very tough to actually get around that. And that's like what your marketing has to do. Um, but the market will, over and along the time horizon, the market will always tell you whether your product is good or not. What happens is if you, you have a bad product, right? I'll write this down so I saw it on here. Bad product equals people talk. And think about, think about your niche, whatever your, whatever your skill you've learned or whatever audience you're looking to target for us, we'll again use, use sneaker resellers. There's not that many sneaker resellers. And so if we have a bad product, people talk. People are going to tell their other reseller friends, right? Everyone's so well connected or, or so in the same network. I mean, they're doing business with each other all day long. If we have a bad product, very quickly, everyone's going to find out. And the cost of acquired customer is going to go up. No one's going to want to buy from us. We're going to have no referrals, ascensions, et cetera, because their product sucks, right? On the other hand, if we have, I should have did that in, uh, in red. That would have been nice. If we have a good product, same thing happens, but it just works in reverse. People still talk, but they're just saying good things, right? And I'm gonna talk about this, why converting actually goes after the deliverable. Um, again, it, it comes back. I'll talk about that later. But um, for now, just understand that your marketing is gonna oftentimes come from the products you deliver. And if you have a really good product, let's say you're, you teach people how to mow lawns, and you can show people how to mow the best lawns in the world every single time, you don't, you don't have to do much, right? You're just telling them what your product is and you just communicate that well enough and then make sure you're getting the eyeballs and the job's done for you. 
um, you don't want to have like, if you have a bad product, you can't just tell them what your shit is. Like you have to hard sell. It's not what you want. You're going to have a tough time sleeping at night. Uh, you're just going to be scamming people. So the sales and marketing, in my mind, it's, it's the least important of everything. I think uh, getting the eyeballs and then just having a good product takes care of that middle section for you. And there's not much work that has to be done there. Obviously, there's things that you're going to need to do like um, for converting or, or marketing. There's like you want to have as much touch points as you can. So, again, it goes back to like the paid, but you're targeting the right people and then you're telling them about your stuff. What's the customer journey look like? Are they going from your organic and paid ads to an opt-in page where they have to put in their email and then you're sending them through an email email marketing campaign where you're just reminding them of your product, continuing to, to give value and build trust and then eventually making the ask? Um, are you selling just on your Instagram story and saying, hey, buy my thing, here's a link, click here, good to go? Or are you having them message you? Something we do a lot, you guys have seen it if you follow us on Instagram, it's just like DM us, keyword if you want X, Y, Z. Um, and again, I want to remind you, I'm not selling anything here, but we'll post that on our story. People will swipe up and then we'll sell in private. And that's how it works. We don't ever sell in public. We're not posting a link to buy anything in a YouTube video, in an Instagram video, in a TikTok, whatever. It's all done in private conversations. And we're only even mentioning it to anyone who is our perfect customer, right? We don't talk to anyone or get on a sales call with anyone who has less than $10,000 of capital under the age of 18 and less than one year of experience reselling sneakers, um, which is like the vast majority of people are unqualified. So the vast majority of people we will never sell to and they'll never know we have anything for sale and that's okay. Helps the reputation, builds goodwill. All right, sorry, my uh, camera died. I had to replace the battery. Like really all you wanna do with sales, it's all about is just educating the customer as long as they're the right customer. You're just educating them on your solution and explaining why your solution is the best. But you can only do that with confidence or actually do that with morals if your solution is actually the best. So focus on, put most of your time towards making your solution the best to solve their problem, understand their problem better than you understand, better than they understand it themselves. And then just explaining that. It's not about like convincing them or persuading them or, or like some like sleazy like car salesman tactic. Literally all it is, is just helping them make a decision and explaining why your solution is the best to fit their problems. That's it. You don't have to like tell them that they're going to buy a Lamborghini in a year if they follow you or pay you $5,000. You literally just have to walk them through logically explain why your solution is the best to fit their problems or to solve their problems. And if you actually can do that, you're good. You don't have to hard sell it. It's not going to be some, some crazy process. Um, on the marketing side, really all you got to figure out is, is where you want to make the ask. Do you want to do it a link in bio? Do you want to do uh, post on your Instagram story? Do you want to funnel towards a free community and then have the upsell? Do you want to do the self liquidating offer that we talked about with paid? Do you want to, I mean, what we do a lot is like, we'll just post value publicly and then we'll have like some type of CTA, some type of call to action on our Instagram story where it's like, swipe up with yada 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 if you want X, Y, Z. Uh, people will swipe up, we'll talk to them, we'll see if they even qualify for our offer. If not, cool, we'll just give them some free value, build goodwill. They don't even know we have anything for sale. They think we're just like really nice guys and we just want to help everybody, which um, if you think anyone's like that, you're mistaken. Everyone has incentives, everyone has reasons for doing things. Most of the time it's money. Uh, but if someone does meet our qualifications, like for us, I think I mentioned this before, but it's 10K capital liquid. You gotta be over the age of 18 and you gotta have at least one year experience for yourself sneakers. Again, I'm not gonna sell you. Even if that's you, you can't buy from them, sorry. Uh, but we wait for those people, we have that conversation, and then we'll, we'll make the ask and we'll book them on a sales call, then we'll go through the process, explain everything, et cetera. Uh, but only the people who actually qualify, even though we sell, we don't sell in public at all. Uh, that's the nature of like a, a more high ticket offer. When you're charging a couple thousand dollars, you don't wanna just post a link and buy them and then just like, see if people buy it. Chances are you're not gonna, you're not gonna convert well. Um, so yeah, that's how we do things. There's other concepts that are probably important. Like uh, the big thing is like, you need a lead magnet. And so when I say we're getting people to swipe up, we're making the call to action. Usually it's like, we're giving away some free resource that people actually want. So it's like, uh, we're giving away 
that self self limiting offer I talked about, that could just be a lead magnet. It could be like, cool, we're giving away a list of fifty consignment stores in the U.S. Just swipe up with chicken, and we'll uh, we'll send it over. They swipe up. Either we send them to an opt-in page. They got to put in their their email and their contact info in order to get then get the the list. Or we're just having a conversation in DMs, nurturing them, seeing if they're a good fit. Midway through the conversation, we just send them the lead magnet and then keep having the conversation. It's just an excuse to get in the DMs. <laughs> not not trying to really love or anything, but excuse to get into DMs, excuse to, to start the conversation. Um, so lead magnet, then you have a conversation, nurture, put them through your funnel, or just do it do it yourself. Um, this is like why you've seen, I'm sure you've seen it on Instagram. It's like I feel like every other reel is this the same format where it's provide value and then it's comment banana and I'll send you our free resource or I'll send you our free course or whatever. You comment that, you can just use, uh, it's called ManyChat, you can just use that. It'll automatically respond to their comments, DM them the link to their, the free group resource, whatever. And then again, it can just be automated. So it can just be like a opt-in page, collects the funnel, puts them into an email marketing campaign. And then uh, also it just goes straight to the lead magnet, which maybe has an upsell at the bottom of it. Um, or it's just uh, collecting phone numbers and you're calling them and you're saying, hey, buy my shit, whatever. Um, but lead magnet, then you're nurturing and, and having the conversation, seeing if they're a good fit, and then you're selling. And that's about it. And again, most of the work comes from the product and making sure you have the right people on uh, seeing, seeing your stuff. Um, okay. Honestly, I could probably make a full video on this, and maybe I will eventually um, on the sales and marketing, because I actually do enjoy this stuff. And I think it's the easiest part of all this, uh, the, the simplest, if you do the other two right. But there's a lot that, um, there's still a lot that goes into it. And again, I want to emphasize that I'm going to be talking through all this stuff just like high level. There's a lot more info and a lot more details, obviously, that goes into it. Um, like, for example, like landing page, there's like 50 different things that you want to you want to optimize for and test, like your headline, your, your sub headline, your what the VSL looks like, what the, the booking page looks like, what the, the flow looks like. Um, it's all that stuff. I can make a video, but for now, I just want to talk about it uh, high level. Um, all right, so last piece is delivering the eyeballs. Uh, again, probably the hardest, or probably the most important, maybe not the hardest, I think getting eyeballs for the hardest. Uh, but delivering a good product, good product, product. You do this, you should be good. Uh, you, you make 10,000, you can probably click off now. Um, I'm just kidding. But good product, basically what this is, is you gotta figure out what your customer wants or what the change is, what you're actually delivering, what the transformation is. We'll call it a transformation for this. So transformation. Transformation, are you helping them lose 30 pounds? Are you helping them make $5,000? Are you helping them mow 16 lawns? What are you actually doing? Um, this is the first piece. The second piece is time slash speed. And we'll call this uh, transformation delta. So it's the difference between where they are currently and then where they want to go. We'll call this transformation time and speed. Time and speed. And then uh, probability. So transformation probability. Wow, my hair is terrible. Um, we'll just, all right, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go T and then we're gonna do probability. This is the three pieces of what makes a good product, really all you need. There's obviously different subcategories underneath, but what is the transformation you're promising? How quick can you get that to actually happen? Does it take them 10 years to make the $10,000 per month or does it take them 10 months? Does it take them one week? And then uh, probability, what are the chances that it actually works? Out of your customers, 100 people buy your shit, do 10 of them hit 10K per month, Do one of them hit 10k per month, or do all of them hit 100k or 10k per month. Um, these are the three pieces you need to work on. Um, and if you increase the transformation delta, and you decrease 
the transformation time or increase the speed and you increase the probability, you're going to be rich. If you can make someone $10,000 per month tomorrow, which uh, that'd be pretty cool. Um, and you can do it 100% of the time, you're going to be a fucking trillionaire very quickly. Um, but all this other stuff is, is harder than than, uh, than just, just talking about it. So the transformation delta, the biggest thing there is like making sure you actually know what you're talking about. Um, so if, what we were talking about earlier, where you have to actually get results. That's the most important thing for the transformation delta. You can't show someone how to do something that you can't do yourself. I feel like that's pretty intuitive. Um, so spend the time on getting the results and actually mastering the processes, and then you'll be able to have a, a big, a big transformation delta. Um, with the speed, really, what it, what that is is it comes with actually delivering the product first. Your product, when you first launch, you're gonna have like your your MVP, your middle wild product, and uh, it's not gonna be amazing, but you're gonna have someone go through the process, and you're gonna be maybe there's just a lot of touch points, right? Maybe you don't have anything built out. You're literally just taking one-on-one -on -one calls with them and you're doing that like every single day until they get the desired result. But maybe you're recording those calls or maybe you're making a list of all the questions that they ask. And then you have your second customer, your third customer, your fourth customer, your fifth customer. And you're having all these touch points. You're just doing it all yourself. Nothing's automated. You'll start to realize, okay, these are the three things that they ask right when they join or on our first one-on-one -on -one call. Maybe I film a video or I just write up a quick breakdown, solving, answering those questions, solving those problems. Cool, let's give it to them as soon as they join within the first 30 minutes, right? On the second call, this is the normal questions they ask, this is the, the problems, whatever. You get the point. As you go through it enough, you'll start to see what are the questions people have and what problems they're facing and what are the things that will help them achieve the goal faster, right? What is the actual workflow to getting to where they want to go? So that'll come with practice through deliverable. The more and more times you deliver the product, as long as you're not an asshole, the more and more you're going to improve the product and the smoother that, that process is going to be, the shorter that time is going to be. Um, and the last one is probability. This comes a lot with what ask you're actually making. Are you telling people that you're going to get them to 100k per month? Maybe you can, but maybe like 1% of the people are actually going to do it. If you're having something that's realistic, you know that people can do it on a consistent hit rate. In my mind, I'd rather have like a 90% success rate, but maybe a, a, a smaller transformation than have some crazy promise or some crazy ask and then like 1%, 2%, whatever. Because you think about it, those people who are in the probability, right, who don't achieve the result, those chances are they're gonna be unhappy customers. Um, you want people to be happy with your product. So maybe you just gotta adjust your transformation and that's, that's gonna be a better way to, to increase the probability. Um, even if it's sacrificing the, the big, big glamorous ask. Um, why that's so important, I mentioned it earlier, but this comes back into play after you deliver the product. Once you've sold them on the first thing, and once you've sold them on your offer, sorry, my boy just came out. Um, once you've sold them on the first offer, what's up? We're filming. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're good. Um, once you sold them on the first offer, you want some type of ascension, you want some type of upsell, right? And so you can do a upsell, you can do a cross sell, you can do a down sell, whatever. You want to increase the delta of your customer, right? And so how you do this is, let's say for us, for example, we had our consignment product, right? So we would help people connect people with consignment stores across the country, yada, 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 whatever. The product was good. And because of that, people trusted us. They wanted to buy more stuff that we have. And so we launched the Amazon program just a few months ago again. Not gonna sell you, just wanna make that clear. Um, we launched the Amazon program, basically just a different way, different method of reselling, a different offer. A lot of our clients in the Amazon section came from consignment. They know we deliver, they know our product is good, but we, in, in our minds, it's just like, okay, what's the next thing that they're gonna wanna learn? The next method that's gonna be hot in sneakers? Like we had, I mean like three years ago, we were, we were teaching people like sneaker investments, which uh, at the time was hot. A lot of things were going up. You just had to figure out which shoes would actually go up. Then we switched to consignment. That was hot, whatever. We focused on that, built on a great product. Now we think Amazon is next. So we're just giving them what they want. Um, it's a, that's a cross sell. It's serving the same purpose, 
just a different a different variation. Um, you can also have the upsells, which is just more of what they already bought. So let's say we didn't actually do this for consignment, but let's say uh, consignment we had uh, main core offer here, core, and then we had uh, high level, or maybe it's like you get access to. Actually, we did do this. Um, with, it, with a, a couple of people, it was never a fully built out product, but we basically, we'd have our core, we'd have our consignment stores <coughs> established with direct line creation. Everyone in the group, the core offer can use those consignment stores. We had some guys, some clients, where we charged them, it was like double or triple the price, but we'd go out and find consignment stores where they would be the only consignment there. It was exclusive consignment, right? Just for that one person. This is for like, obviously the, the bigger clients, the guys, the guys were like millions of pairs in inventory, hundreds of thousands of pairs in inventory. Um, so they they would like destroy all the, the other stories. They just flood them with, with stock. Um, so we had to have some of different product and this was just a natural upsell. A little bit more expensive, but just more of what the core was. You could have a downsell, um, which you can do this on the sales call. So let's say someone's, you're on a sales call, you're selling them a, a $5,000 thing, whatever. They say they're not ready for it. They say they don't have enough money. Cool. We have a cheaper alternative. While you're still building your capital, while you're still learning, you can use that. So for Amazon example, we could have a, we have our core offer, right? Which helps people get to whatever, five, six thousand dollars profit per month. We also can have a down sell. We can sell this to either people who have already bought the core offer or people who just aren't ready for the core offer. And this will just be a lead group. I'm sure you guys know with Amazon, you need to buy products, you need to buy profitable products. If we can just send people profitable products, we don't have any one-on-one -on -one calls, group calls, no, no touch points, whatever. It's just sending them leads. We can charge, I think we charge like 250 a month and we let like 10, 12 people in um, each group. It's exclusive leads just for that group. And uh, yeah, we can sell people on a core, get more money, increase their lifetime value, deliver more good product, more good service. But also, if someone is not ready for the core offer, we can downsell them on the call or on the, on the in the funnel towards the, the lead group. Um, maybe they're more likely there. <coughs> um, so yeah, that's core offer. Uh, sorry, that's cross sales, down sales, up sales. Good ways to increase LTV. Referrals. We'll go read some. Referrals. This is also where we're getting a lot of our clients now. It's just. Our clients have enjoyed our product, they've gotten results, so they tell their friends. Like I said earlier, whether you have a good or bad product, people are gonna talk to other people in the same circle to your target audience. And so if you if you can have good products, I promise you, your clients are gonna get you more clients. And that's the point where you wanna get, right? Because then it's just, like, like I said, the sales and marketing is like done for you. The clients and the product does the work for you. Um, so referrals, I mean, you can set this up. Usually the, the format's gonna be like, the person who makes the referral gets some type of kickback and the person who joins from the referral gets some type of discount or kickback. Um, so you can do like, let's say you're selling $5,000 $5, product, you can do like 250 to the person who makes the referral, 250 off the price for the person who joins. So you're getting like 4,500. Um, but again, the sales marketing is done for you. And if you can build out a program like that, obviously you don't want to build a fucking pyramid scheme, but um, if you can actually do that to make sure the product's actually good, and the referral system makes sense to where it's only people who actually enjoy the product are incentivized then to go tell their friends about it. Uh, you have those incentives in place. You're good. Um, all right, so that's it. I mean, that's like getting eyeballs, converting eyeballs, delivering eyeballs. Again, this is not high level. I can make a full video for like, I could probably talk for five hours just on sales or just on marketing or just on content or just on product. Um, and how to actually build the systems and, and once you get past the 10K, maybe build out the teams for that. I mean, we spend, I don't know what, we spend like 40, 50K a month on payroll, people who actually do these things full time um, and the systems we built out, the workflows we built out for those. Um, but the last thing I want to do is just break down, you can erase these finally. I want to break down the numbers just to make this a little bit more realistic for you guys. So you can see exactly where the 10,000 is actually coming from. All right, so we need to make $10,000 every month, obviously. 
Um, three different ways you can do this, right? Three different ways you can set up your business. And I'll talk about which, which way is best for whatever you're doing right now. So at the start, right, you gotta, you gotta do shit. You gotta get good, good results doing the shit you're doing. Um, and like I said, you could either be doing something where it's like money making, you can be doing something where it's more skill based. So studying, mowing lawns, or you can just be doing the business um, and not building the business around your skill. Um, so this would be like, this would be like, I'm trying to give a good example. This would be just like um, plumbing. Plumbing, and you're just a plumber, that's it. Everything I talked about still applies. Um, but you still need to get you still need to convert, you still need to, to deliver. Um, but that's that. Maybe the other option is you built a business around the skill you learned. So let's say this is like info product. And let's say you got really good at like drop shipping and you can just for the sake of example, I know uh, most people in that space are just a bunch of a bunch of scammers, but um, let's say you can make people ten thousand dollars per month hundred percent of the time and uh, you can do it in like a week, right? Maybe you're charging ten K or let's show it one thousand. One time payment, you get access to the course whatever, et cetera. Other option, maybe it's more, this is probably better for, for skills based. Let's say you got really good at, um, you got really good at studying, right? It doesn't necessarily help you make money, maybe indirectly it helps you, but you uh, you serve students, you serve kids in high school, whatever. Um, this will be the other category. So again, just doing the actual business, building a business or info product around the business, and then uh, some type of like low ticket where it's like very skill based. You're not necessarily helping to make money. You probably can't charge as much. Um, it's much easier to charge 10k if you're helping make someone someone make 100k versus charging someone 10k to uh, help them get like an A plus on the test um, for obvious reasons. So we'll start down here. This will probably be best for some type of community based thing. Um, so we'll call it like we'll call it like 50 dollars per month. Um, you want to build out the, the community, the product, whatever people can talk, group calls, one-on-one -on -one calls, et cetera. Uh, $50 per month, you need 200 clients. 200 clients, here we go. You need 200 clients and uh, you need to keep that every single month in order to make 10K per month, that's it. Obviously it's gonna be a little bit of a ramp up, right? Maybe the first month you get 10, second month you have 17, uh, three drop, you get another 10. So let's say, let's say for the sake of the example, you're getting uh, 100 clients every single month. We are also churning, you're losing 20 clients every month. So we can show what that looks like. It would just be, actually we'll use a smaller number. So let's say you're getting 20 per month and you're losing like three. So first month would be, I don't know why I'm picking these numbers. First month you get 20, second month you get 20 and you lose three. So you have 37. Then the third month you get another 20 minus three again. You're at what's that, 54. You get the point, it goes on, on and on until you hit that 200. Um, really, if you're going to go subscription, it's going to be monthly recurring, whatever. You, the two things you're going to look at is your um, growth rate and your churn. Really, all this is is like, I'll just make it a little bit easier. It's just how many people. Join per month. How many uh, leave per month? And the difference, the delta here, is uh, your growth rate. How quickly are you going to grow, right? If you lose three people per month and you gain the 20 per month, you're growing at, at 17 per month. Um, but as long as this is positive, over a long enough time horizon, you'll be good. You'll get there eventually. If you're doing info products, maybe something a little bit more high ticket, um, and the math is pretty simple here, you just need to sell 10 people. The catch here and the watch up is that, great, you sell 10 people one month, a thousand dollar product one time, guess what, next month, you gotta start all over again, you gotta fight to get those, those 10 new clients every single month, which is why there's a lot of value in, in recurring and some type of subscription model. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're going the, the high ticket one-time payment. Um, and the thing is that like, you have to get new customers that next month, 
but you still got to deliver it to the first batch of customers. And so let's, let's say you have like a six month program. By the end of the six month, you're serving 60 customers and you still have to do everything with the sales. So just keep that in mind that the work will, will increase that way. Plumbing, maybe it's a, a batch. I actually don't know. I don't know how much plumbers cost, but let's say they got like some customers. So this is just 10 clients. Let's say plumbers, they have like some people who is like sinks break. They know like the same amount of people, their sinks break like twice a year. They have a uh, hundred clients, whatever. Um, so I should have picked a better number. But let's say like one out of every 10 months, their sinks break and they have a hundred customers. They're going to have in theory, 10 customers every single month. And that's recurring um, or in, again, in theory it's recurring. So it's, let's say they're charging, oh, how much do plumbers charge? $200, whatever, times 10. And so this would be 2K per month. And let's say they have some bigger jobs that aren't necessarily consistent, but they have, this is more like the, the high ticket. They have like a, they have to replace an entire sink or they have to replace an entire bathroom and like redo everything, all the pipes, whatever. And those are like, uh, we'll call it like 4K each times two. So they do two high hit and then they have the, the um, the tender current in. So you can do a hybrid model um, and eventually you will build out your product catalog. So you'll have like a high ticket and you have like a low ticket down sell, which is recurring, or you have some combination of this. But yeah, this is how you get to 10K per month. There's there's more I could say in detail, but these are the, the frameworks that you're going to need. Um, yeah, good night.